So this is the pre-calculus. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go over what you can kind of expect to see in the class and how you can um, know how I grade and stuff like that so that you can kind of best prepare yourself for success in here. Okay. <clears throat> Um, basically, I'm just going to go over this. It's going to be a pretty quick day. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of downtime. So, um, that's pretty much it. Let's get a crack in here. Um, so, what is trig and pre cal? Um, basically, it's pre calculus is the work calculus, right? Um, I would say probably, you know, if 80% of what we're going to learn is just more algebra 2 kind of stuff, honestly. Uh, and we're just kind of giving you a chance to really go a little bit deeper with those topics and refine them. Um, Pre-calculus is largely designed to kind of prepare you for calculus. Um, and honestly, the, the weakest spot that a lot of people have in calculus is their algebra skills. So that's why we spend a little bit of time in algebra too. And then of course, the rest of the time we'll be talking about trigonometry, which is, um, basically like triangles and circles um but it's a very algebra-ish kind of geometry if you will so uh this is kind of our outlook for the year um you guys you have it there in front of you but as you guys can kind of see linear functions um absolute value functions quadratics polynomials rational exponential all that stuff's old stuff really um, that doesn't mean that i'm not going to be sharing some new topics with you in there because we will um, in particular i'm going to start giving them a little bit more of a calculus bent um, just getting used to the calculus kind of language but a lot of it is review um, it's not until about sometime in second semester that we're going to start up on the trigonometry stuff okay i doubt we will get to units 14 and 15 um, it's a goal, but it, it's rarely reached just because there's so much to cover. Uh, but the good news is those are things that um, they're nice to know, but not essential for calculus A, B at least. Um, now, if you're going to calculus B, C next year, those are good to know. And I can help you kind of know how to fill in the blanks if you choose to jump into Calc B, C. <laughs> All right. So what you're going to be needing for our class is a three-ring binder. I would recommend two inches at least. Um, you're going to want to have at least 12 tabbed dividers in there. Each of those dividers is going to be a chapter. I don't really use a textbook too closely in the class. Um, so basically, we're designing our own book as we go, and that's your notebook. Um, and so that's why you want to keep a notebook and keep it really nice and have it organized, because that's going to be your reference book. This is somebody's from last year. I picked a nice one. Um, and I'll just pass it around you to kind of see what I'm looking for there. Um, but that's about it. Now, some people do like to use like a composition notebook or a spiral bound notebook. You can. The only downside is, is that a lot of times I print notes for you. So unless you're okay with like stapling or taping stuff into your composition notebooks, you might want to just get a three ring binder so you can hole punch things and be a little bit more flexible. But it's up to you. Um, I put a scientific calculator, um, you know, most of you guys have them on your phones. You probably don't really need that. But honestly, if you are thinking about going into calculus anytime soon, whether it be here or in college, I would recommend getting a graphing calculator, like a TI-84. They're very expensive, they're like 150 bucks. But um, we'll be messing around with these a little bit throughout the year. Um, some of you guys have probably had some experience with them from your Algebra 2 teachers. Um, but they're a really cool tool, and in fact, if you are going to take calculus here, it's actually part of the test that you know how to use that device. So you do want to be getting familiar with it. So if you do plan on taking calculus next year, it's it's a worthy investment if you can afford it. Okay, because uh, the more familiar you are with your calculator, the better. All right. Um, so let's talk about how the class goes. Um, so I'm a pretty normal like not not a horribly exciting teacher but um i just kind of lecture and let you guys practice that's pretty much all we do um wednesdays however are quiz days so that that's a day where basically i'm going to quiz you on everything from the previous week okay 
And feel free to uh, stop me if you have any questions. I think did I, I did I leave blanks for you guys to fill in on these things as we will? Yeah. Okay. So let me know if I'm going too fast. I need to fill something in. Okay. All right. Um. I'll pause. It sounds like a TV. Okay. So there's your grade breakdown for the year. There, you can kind of see that tests and finals are worth the most. Quizzes, secondary, homework, participation and notes underneath of that. The first two, those are knowledge-based assessments. So in other words, to get credit, you actually have to be correct. That's nothing new to you, right? You know that with quizzes and tests. However, with homework, different teachers do different things. I don't actually grade you for accuracy. I don't know too many teachers that do do that, but some do. Um, so I don't. I just basically see if you tried the problem. Um, we do have participation points in this class and also um, notes. That's pretty much it. So as you guys can see there, um, the things that test how much you know in the class is 70% and how hard you're willing to work makes up about 30%. Um, I can bring something up here I'd like to demonstrate something. Um, and that's pretty common. I've talked to a lot of teachers. A lot of teachers break it down this way, 70, 30. Um, and I'll, the reason why teachers do that, well, at least the reason I do it, is because, you know, suppose you're not a math person, right? Then maybe you're, what you know might not be so strong. Or maybe you do know it, but you're just not a big test or quiz person, right? Some of us get kind of nervous there and don't do well. So let's say that you got you know on most of your tests quizzes and finals you got like let's say like a 50 percent okay just an average um how do you find 50 percent of 70 well i know it's just half right but let, let's go ahead and do it a little bit more precise let's say it's 0.5 times 70 right um but you're a hard working student you pretty much always do what you're supposed to do there um, so let's say that you get 100% of your effort. So I'll put 100% of 30, right? 1 times 30, 0.5 times 70. Um, so 0.5 of 70 is 35. 100% of 30 is 30. Add those together, you get 65, which is about a D, moving into a D plus. And honestly, with extra credit, retake tests, a lot of times people end up getting, it, you know, if you're scared of math and not such a great test taker, it's not uncommon for people like that to get a C. Sometimes if they work really hard, you're going to be, but pretty much no reason to fail. So I want you guys to feel comfortable and safe in here. Um, and you're already awesome. You're, you're willing to challenge yourself by taking, you know, pre-calculus. It's not part of the typical, like, just get out of high school path. You know, you're telling me by sitting in here that you guys are interested in. Um, a little bit more so but you can do it so all right um, let's talk about tests I think is the next one um, probably about one to three weeks we'll have a test in fact in the beginning of the year you're, you're gonna feel like a test again it's just gonna move fast because um, a lot of things that we start off with are pretty simple review things. Um, we're just going to hit them, boom, 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 get them out of the way. Um, so we can spend a little more time on the more complicated stuff. Um, I always give like a study guide or a sample test before the actual test. This is a little bit different um, probably than what you're used to in your um, previous math classes. I, I spend two days doing tests when I do it usually. Um, the first test won't be like this, but in the future it will be. Um, the first day, I gave you part one, which is just basically the test on what we're learned, what we've learned. Um, the second day, um, we, we're always going to have a review test on old stuff. Okay, so it's cumulative. And once again, I'll provide you with a study guide so you can kind of expect to see what type of review topics will be on there. You'll have your notebook. Sometimes we'll even put where you can find how to do them in your notebook. Um, but basically, you'll always be able to come prepared for that on the next day. I break them up over two days. So, you know, one day you can study right before part one. Then you go home, no homework. You just study for part two of the test the next day. 
which I'll, is all review, so hopefully it's nothing surprising to you. Um, I do throw another part in there. Um, I'll just call it a think it on your think on your feet question. Um, what they are is they're they're questions where I'm asking you to apply the math that we've learned in a new context. Okay, so it's it's not like a cookie cutter problem. Like this is exactly like one I've done. I've just changed the numbers and the words. It's more like something you actually got to think about a little bit. But it will be the math that we've learned nonetheless. Um, so before you get too scared, it's not a huge percent of the test, probably only like maybe 5% of the test, so no big deal, nothing to be too afraid of. Um, you're going to read the question individually and work on it for like maybe 10 minutes, and then after that, I let you guys just get up and talk to whoever you want to about ideas that they have about how to do that question, um, but you're not allowed to write at that time. And then after that, you get another 10 minutes to go back and put your final touches on it. Uh, why do I do that? Um, because I want you guys to learn how to think with the math that I'm teaching you um, and show me how well you can think with the math that I'm teaching you and also how to collaborate with others to solve a problem. Um, so that's why I'm tossing that stuff in there. Okay. Um, as you guys know, well, so I, I do allow you to use notes on the test, but if you do use your notes, I cap your grade at 80%. And like a lot of teachers, of course, you can do retakes if you want to, but that also caps your grade at 80%. Okay. And if you are doing a retake, then you can use your notes and there's no extra penalty. So. All right, quizzes, like I said, once per week. That'll be on Wednesday. Um, and you could do the same kind of score boosters there, like retakes or notes. The same thing applies. Um, participation. So um, basically how I do this is just by showing up to class and doing your work, you get like four out of five points a day, which is about a B. You can earn extra points, though, by... Hi. Okay. Um, our grade would be out of eight. Your grade gets capped at a B, yeah. So, like, let's say you, you took the test and you got a 90. I would drop you to a B for using notes. Okay. Um, so, in other words, I don't want you to use notes, um, but I'm willing to let you do it. Um, I don't want to make it just a freebie because um, I do want you guys to actually know how to do it, and I, I also want to encourage you guys to study. Um, for the test um, so if you don't feel so basically what I tell students is if you don't feel like you're going to get at least like a, a high C or a B all on your own without the notes then you should probably use them if you do feel like you're going to get at least a high C or a B then go ahead and try it without and you can just do a retake right um, anyway participation points you just get four out of five points for showing up every day that's a B also um, so if you want to get a little more, then you're going to just do some ways to get some extra points. Um, anytime you volunteer a response, you get a point. Anytime you help other people, you get a point. After school tutoring is a great way to make up points that you might have missed because you were absent. Um, anything you do to help me out, I get points for that. Um, if you're not on task, you can actually lose points. Um, and if you catch me make a mistake, then it's about to be a math mistake, but you can get a point that way as well. Um, and you can actually get actually, actually get more than 100% on there, so you can actually get so many extra points that it could actually add like an extra 2.5% to your overall grade. They go in at the end of every quarter, though, so you won't actually see it in the grade book until quarter one is like done, um, and that's when they go in. Okay? But I just keep a record of them. And the little cards that you guys filled out for me today with your name on it, um, I use those just to randomly call on people and ask questions, and you get points on the cards whenever you do that. So, But there's a variety of ways to get them. So homework, it's assigned daily on that wall over there. You guys can see your wall. It says pre-calculus. I teach three levels of math right now. I've got algebra 2, pre-calculus, and calculus AB. So your board is the one over there on the right. Um, 
now when we get into doing like math assignments, it's going to be due the following block. Um, but sometimes I give you a little bit more time. Um, so I'll go over what your homeworks are a little bit later um, for tonight, but that's that. Notebooks, like I told you, the, the notebooks that I'm passing around, those are graded on neatness and organization and completeness. Um, absence versus late work. I don't take late work, so if you were here but you didn't turn it in on time, then um, it won't be accepted. Um, but if you're absent, of course, you can make stuff up. Uh, like I said, since I record my lessons, uh, my suggestion would be, like, let's say you were gone Tuesday. Well, if you can, before you come back Wednesday, watch the video lesson, get the homework done, and just be caught up with us by the time you get back. You don't have to be. I mean, I, I'll give you until Thursday to get everything made up, right? But um, the sooner the better. So you can kind of keep up with us completely online there if you need to. Um, now, if, you, if you're ever absent or tardy, it's usually not an issue unless you have, like, you're a chronically absent person and your absences are never excused. And, like, let's say I call home and I speak with your parents or guardian, and they're like, no, they're supposed to be in school. Well, I probably won't take your assignments anymore, right? In other words, so if you're just ditching, I wouldn't take your assignments. So be aware of that. Um, I have an absent student basket over there. That's just a detail that you'll probably figure it out as time goes on, but there it is. Um, if you're ever gone on the day of the test, my, my goal is basically just like, as soon as you get back, I'm going to give you the test you missed the day before. That would be my goal. But a lot of times I'm just so busy, I don't even think to do it. So it's kind of on you guys to just remember, you want to take your test. Don't wait too long because it's Obviously, it's hard to remember stuff after a while. Um, more details, probably easy to forget, but tomorrow we're going to play Jeopardy, okay? And we're going to use this uh, syllabus to answer questions. So, uh, small detail, but have it ready with you so that you can get some extra points tomorrow when we play the game. Restroom, basically, I let one person out at a time. You get five, ten minutes. Just let me know before you go. Um, you guys know this. This is, a, this is kind of no-brainer stuff here, right? Um, but some specific issues. <sighs> Cell phones. I don't know. Um, I I don't really make a huge um, deal about cell phones. Um, and you're using them in the class. So long as I don't feel like it's impeding your ability to learn, I probably won't harass you. If I do feel like it's impeding your ability to learn, I probably will harass you about it. Um, so it's kind of loosely defined, but but it's not like if I see it, I'm going to slap you. Um, tardiness, I guess that's not a word. Every time I write that on the word, it tells me that's not how you spell tardiness. I don't, I don't know how to spell that. Anyway, um, I will overlook five minutes past the late bell for you guys because um, it's a morning class. So I'm not going to make a big stink, but after about five minutes, I probably would start wondering what's going on. Um, and that's common sense stuff, too, there. So that's it. And we are, therefore, done for the day. Yes, it's not working.